The Word became flesh. This is our theme this Christmas. But why? Because God, the creator of this world, wants people to understand that this is a key part of the significance of Christmas. A lot of people, when they think of Christmas, think about time with family and friends, the giving and receiving of gifts, and perhaps going to church to celebrate the occasion. But sadly, a lot of people don't understand this concept of the Word becoming flesh. If Christmas is about the Word becoming flesh, what does that mean? I'd like you to imagine a world in which we humans couldn't speak. Furthermore, a world in which we couldn't move, nor could we show any emotion whatsoever. Basically, just imagine that we're like slabs of concrete. In that case, how would anyone be able to know anyone else? It wouldn't be possible to know much at all. Without a person expressing him or herself through body language or sign language or written language or especially spoken language, there'd be no place for mutual understanding or friendship. Without communication, there'd be virtually zero knowledge of other people and little opportunity for love. When God tells us in the Bible that Jesus being born into the world is equivalent to the word, God's word, becoming flesh, what does that mean? Well, what do we do with words? We use words to communicate. We express ourselves through words. And as we express the thoughts of our soul through words spoken to others, we reveal ourselves. We share ourselves. Do you know that the creator of this universe has made this world for the purpose of his own communication and sharing? If this world has indeed been created by God, then what is the purpose behind God creating all of this? Why has he created you and me? God has created us because he wants us to get to know him and to be his friends. God created us because he wants to reveal himself to us. He wants to share the thoughts of his mind, thoughts that would remain hidden unless he revealed them. Just like us human beings, God reveals himself through his word. And words are amazing things when you think about it. When it comes to human language, linguists estimate that there are over 6,900 languages spoken in the world today. The language currently spoken by the greatest number of people in the world just happens to be one of the languages that I'm speaking with you today, Mandarin. And the language with the second greatest number of speakers is the other language that I'm using to speak with you today. So our church is pretty fashionable. We're using the two most popular languages in the world today to communicate with each other. Did you know that English has over a million different words in its vocabulary? But most of us only know a maximum of about 20,000. As for Chinese, the most comprehensive Chinese character dictionary contains over 106,000 different characters. Now, I perhaps know a maximum of up to 3,000. But they say that recognising 7,000 to 10,000 characters equates to full literacy. So I still have a long way to go when it comes to reading Chinese. But the variety in sounds that we speak and the variety in the characters that we write is truly amazing. So is the variety of methods that we use to communicate with. We can speak face-to-face or over the telephone. We can write letters, send cards, send SMSs, do video calls, or simply chat online. Where does this ability and interest of ours in communicating come from? Well, it's being built into us by God. We're into communication ourselves because he's into communication. God created us to be his communication partners. But what language does God use to communicate with us? Well, God actually uses lots of languages to speak to us, 
But do you know what his favourite and most important method of communication is? Our theme today gives it away. The word becoming flesh is his ultimate method of communication. Christmas tells us that God chose to take on the form of a human being, entering into our world to speak with us face to face. God not only speaks our language, but he has become one of us in order to speak with us. His divine word has taken on human form in the person of Jesus. One of the things that we need to understand about Christmas then is that Christmas is about God coming into our world to speak to us. The question is, however, are we listening? Are we listening to Jesus? Do you spend time regularly getting to know him? Are you keen to understand his teaching? To ignore Jesus is to reject God's communication to us. Let me ask you this question. Should children listen to their parents or ignore them? Well, they should listen to their parents, shouldn't they? Children, out of respect and out of consideration for their parents' knowledge and experience, should listen to their parents. And not just to their parents, but their grandparents and their great-grandparents and their great-great-grandparents, assuming they're still alive, and so on. If it's right to show respect to our ancestors, as many cultures think it is, well, who just happens to be our oldest ancestor? Who is the original source from whom we all come? Isn't that person God, the creator? To ignore God's communication would be to show disrespect to our ultimate ancestors. So Christmas is more than just having a good time with family and friends. Christmas is about God coming into our world to speak to us. So make sure you listen. Listen to God's revelation of himself in Jesus. The key to a Merry Christmas is discovering Jesus, the VIP baby at the heart of of Christmas. The word has become flesh, so let's make sure we listen to him.